Hello again. Wow. I wonder how many of you have been waiting all week to uh, uh, to get this um, this next video. Uh, in this video, um, we're going to look at another simple game. This was the game that I asked you to have a go at creating last time. Okay, uh, it's called Craps. This is a simplified version of the uh, of, of the full game. And if you can remember uh, last time. Um, these were the uh, rules. So you start off with a thousand pounds. You ask the player how much they want to bet. Um, what type of bet they want, either a two or a twelve, a four or a ten, or a six or an eight. Uh, you roll the dice. If the player has bet on the outcome being two or twelve and the dice come up, either two or twelve, player wins. If the uh, player has bet on um, 4 or 10 and the dice come up 4 or 10, the player wins. If the uh, player has bet 6 or 8 and the dice come up 6 or 8, the player wins. Any other outcome, the player loses. Uh, if the player wins um, on 2 or 12, they get 5 to 1 payback on their, uh, on their stake. So if they bet a tenner, they will get 50 quid back. Um, and um, for four or ten, they get two two and a half times back, and for um, uh, the six or eight, they get one and a half times back. Um, after they've rolled their dice, uh, they get to go again. So the game says, "Do you want to play another round?" They have the opportunity to take their money and go, uh, or play another round. But they um, they need to actually have some money. If they run out of money, they get kicked out of the casino. Uh, those were the rules. So, way I'm going to do this is I'm going to. I don't have. As you can see, I have a blank, a blank document here. I don't have anything um, pre-planned. I'm going to write the. Uh, I'm going to try and get into the thought process of someone that is learning to program. And the way that they might go about building this program based on the set of rules that are written at the side there. Okay, so there's going to be a few mistakes made on purpose so that we can have a look at what sorts of mistakes you might find and uh, what the errors look like. Uh, there's going to be a few times when I backtrack um, and go back and change a few things. Um, but uh, hopefully it should give you some guidance as to um, the process that you'd normally go through when creating these programs. I'm also going to highlight a few things with if statements which I didn't mention in the video on if statements. Um, a few advanced features there so you might pick up a few techniques. Okay, so um, I know at some point in my program I am going to be rolling dice so the first thing I'm going to do is import um, random, a random. I cannot spell again. Like my, there's something up with my fingers. I don't know what it is. Okay, so we're importing random. Now that's going to stay grey until we end up using it. So I'm not that fussed about that. Okay. First thing I want to probably do is uh, welcome the player uh, to the game. Uh, so welcome to craps. Um, we could say it's uh, version 1.0 if you wanted to. Um, I mean, we could there have a prompt, have a uh, you know instructions. Um, so you start with uh, 1,000 um, pounds and. You must. Right, let's see if I can actually type. Must uh, bet on. <laughs> God. On the outcome of uh, two uh, ordinary dice. Well, I don't know. Let's say six sided dice. Uh, six sided dice. Print. Um, you can either bet on rolling a two or a twelve, 
uh, let's say five to one payout. Um, uh, a what have we got? A four or a ten? Um, what's that? Two point five to one payout. Or a six or an eight, uh, which is one point five uh, to one payout. Um, obviously, these are these are not the greatest the greatest uh, laid out instructions in the world, um, but you know we can go back and refine it. I'm just uh, just showing you that you should probably have like some sort of introduction to your to your game rather than just um, you know cracking on with it. Um, if you run out rune uh, of money, it is game over. Over. Okay. Um, and then let's maybe have a just a blank line. Okay, so we've got an introduction. Now, I'm going to introduce you to uh, comments. You'll see I have started this line with a hash symbol. The hash symbol says to the interpreter, ignore this line. Okay, um, it, we use hash symbols uh, at the start of lines in order to add comments. A comment is... Um, a little notice to the programmer uh, saying what's going on um, in the in the following lines. Okay, um, a lot of the time they're not necessary, but there's um, sometimes it's useful if there's some fairly uh, bizarre looking code. Sometimes it's useful to have a uh, a comment there explaining what goes on. Um, you shouldn't comment every single line. You should comment uh, individual code blocks. It's also if you are working in a team of different people uh, and they all have to look at the code, it's worth putting comments in there uh, because people are not privy to your own thought processes. So uh, although you might have had a flash of inspiration and you know exactly what you did, uh, if you put the comment in there, then anyone else looking at your code will be able to see what you did as well. And also yourself, it, like two weeks later, you probably won't be able to remember what it was that you were thinking at the time. So putting those comments in there is going to be useful. Now, obviously, this comment, it's obvious what's going on there, but I'll put it in there just so we can break up the, um, uh, break up the action a little bit. Mm. Now, I'm going to need some variables. I'm going to need a variable uh, to keep track of the money. Um, probably going to need a variable to keep track of the roll of the dice as well. Okay. Um, now I could, uh, I could have a variable called funds. Uh, and what do we start off with? We start off with a thousand. Um, and I could have a variable called, uh, let's say, result. That's going to be the result of the dice. Let's set that to zero to start off with. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the point in setting up the result if we're just going to roll the dice anyway? It's always useful to initialize your variables at the start of a program. In fact, when I say that it's useful to initialize your variables at the start of the program, I mean it's useful to initialize your variables at the very start of the program so that they are there. Okay. So I'm going to create another comment here uh, that says initialize, init initialize, is that how you spell it? Yeah, variables, variables, variables. Okay. Which means that if I need another variable, I can just come back up to this bit and I can add it in there so that it's ready for when we get to it. So um, we have got, at the moment, we've got funds. Uh, we have got a something to hold the, uh, the result of the dice. Um, okay, um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're obviously going to tell the user... Um, how much money they've got. So uh, we'll have a print in there and we will say uh, you currently currently have 
Um, uh, what is it? Funds. You currently have funds, and so that will tell us how much money we've got. Um, so now we need to ask how much they want to bet. So we're going to need another variable to hold their stake. Okay, so up here, let's set stake to zero. By giving them initial values, you are telling Python effectively what type of variables they're likely to be. Uh, Python's different to other programming languages that have uh, uh, languages like C and Java. Um, you will say, hey, here's my variable and this is an int, or here's my variable, this is a char, or whatever. Uh, with Python, uh, it determines the data type based on what value is stored in it. Um, so if it looks like an integer, it's going to store it as an integer. So uh, we are setting off um, with stake equals zero. We're going to store an integer value in there. For the purposes of this game as well, I'm not going to let you bet um, sort of like £3.50 or anything like that. Only one, you know, increments of a pound when you're when you're betting. Um, so let's ask the user to place a bet. Stake equals um, uh, and we're converting it to an integer. We are going to input uh, how gal, how much uh, do 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 you want to bet? Okay, so it's going to ask the user how much they want to bet. Now, one thing that I like to do on my inputs, I like to put a backslash n and then a, um, uh, a one of those, a greater than symbol. Uh, and what that does, it sort of like it, it drops it onto a new line and gives a nice prompt for the user. Um, okay, so the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to stick some uh, debug text in. Okay. Um, Oh, excuse me. Uh, I want to be able to see what's going on in the program while I'm developing it, just to double check that everything's all working. So um, uh, I'm going to print out the value of whatever uh, stake is, just so that I can see, um, you know, whether it's stored the value correctly or not. Uh, what do we call it? Stake. There we go. Stake. Um, cool, right, now, I'm nowhere near finished, okay, that's, we know that, but I am going to run the program just to make sure that everything's working as intended, and just to make sure that there's no silly errors that are going to creep up there, okay, so here we go, Bazinga, uh, welcome to craps, you start off with a thousand pounds, and you must bet on the outcome of two six-sided dice, you can either bet on rolling a two or a twelve, five to one payout, uh, a four or a ten, uh, 2.5 to 1 payout, or a, uh, a 6 or an 8. So I can already see I've made an error there because I haven't closed that bracket. It's obviously, it's not a critical error. It's just a just a typo, and it's not going to affect the game, but I can already see there. If you run out of money, it's game over. You currently have a £1,000, so obviously that's that bit's working all right. How much do you want to bet? Let's say we're going to bet £400, okay? And then we've got our debug output. Stake is £400. Brilliant, okay? Now, some of you might be thinking, what are you doing? You need a loop in there. It's like, yes, I know I'm going to need a loop in there. To start off with, right, I'm just going to go through and pretend that a game of craps uh, consists of a single roll of the dice. We're going to get that working, and then we're going to stick the loop in. Okay. So now that we have um, entered our stake, we need to ask what type of bet we are going to need. Okay. Now... The way that I'm going to do this, I'm going to have a variable called bet type, uh, and it's going to be a string. The reason it's going to be a string is because if you uh, if you look over uh, at my instructions here, I've said a is two or twelve, b is four or ten, and c is six or eight. So what I'm going to do is ask the user uh, to enter a, b, or c, and I'm going to store that in uh, in here rather than having rather than getting the user to type in two or twelve please you know just they can type in a b or c okay so we're gonna say uh, bet type equals now I don't have to convert anything to an int here because 
you know, it's just going to be a string. So I can say input, uh, let's actually say input though, um, uh, what type of bet? And then um, a uh, 2 or 12. Uh, you'll notice I'm using the backslash n character to give me new lines. Okay, uh, b is um, what is it? Four or ten, um, and uh, c is six, uh, six or eight. Um, and then I'm going to put another new line and once again put in my little character there. Let's actually get that slash in there. Cool. Okay. Uh, and that's just going to store the bet type. Okay. So far, so good. Another thing that some of you picky people out there might be thinking, well, yeah, well, how do you know? What if the user types in, like, you know, the wrong value or something? What if they type in a, a, a Q instead of an A, B, or C? We will get to that. Uh, it will in due time. We'll look at input validation once we know that the core functionality is working. Okay, so it's good that you're thinking about that. If you weren't thinking about that, well, maybe next time you will be thinking about that from now on. Okay, so we're asking what type of bet, whether A, B, or C. Um, and I'm going to do something here. I'm going to put dot lower, open brackets, close brackets, right? or open parentheses, close parentheses, I should say. What that means is whatever we type in will be converted to lowercase. Okay, you see I've, I've put capital letters on my input string here. But for comparative purposes, rather than worrying about whether there's a, you know, the user's typed in lowercase a or uppercase a, um, I'm just going to convert whatever they type in to lowercase. Brilliant. Okay. Cool. Good. So now that they have entered their stake uh, and they have um, entered their bet type, let's get some more uh, debug text in here. Debug um, bet type uh, equals you'll notice I don't have to convert bet type to a string because it's already a string. Okay. Um, I will call this section place bet. Okay. Um, now we've got to roll those dice. Okay, so how do we roll the dice? Well, we're just going to generate a random number between uh, 1 and 6. Uh, wait, no, there's there's two there's, we're rolling two six-sided dice, so we're going to generate a random number between uh, 1 and 12, right? Okay, so we're going to say um, total uh, equals random dot rand range. Uh, now, you'll notice what I did there. Uh, I used tab completion. I typed in the first bit of the rand range dot r a n. You can see there's a whole bunch of different things. I can use the arrow keys to select between them, uh, and then when I select the one that I want, I can press the tab key. It speeds up the typing. Okay. Uh, total equals random dot rand range. Uh, we're going to generate a random number between uh, one and twelve. Okay. Good. And now. Some more debug text. We are going to print um, debug. Uh, what do we call it? Total. Total equals um, do have to convert this one to a string because obviously it is a integer at the moment. Okay, right now. I'm just going to run this. Okay, brilliant. Okay, right. So, how much do we want to bet? Let's say we would bet 500 quid. Brilliant. Uh, right, good. So we know our stakes in there. What type of bet are we going to make? Let's make a. Uh, let's bet on a four or a ten. Brilliant. Okay, so I bet on uh, a four or a ten. Uh, it's rolled the dice and it's come up with a seven. Okay. Um, 
But wait, I'm hoping that some of you out there will be screaming at your um, computer screen at the moment saying, look, if you're rolling two six-sided dice, that is not the same as generating a random number between 1 and 12. Okay, and you are absolutely right. Because if I roll two six-sided dice, the minimum that I'm going to be able to get is 2, and the maximum that I'm going to be able to get is 12. But there is not equal odds of you rolling uh, a 2 and a 7, for instance. Okay, I've got to make sure that I roll both of those dice and add the scores together. There's one other thing as well, which some of you might have pointed out, okay? On this line, line 25, total equals random dot rand range 1, 12. I said I am generating a random number between 1 and 12. What have I done wrong there? How is that wrong? Okay, I'm going to tell you the answer. So pause the video if you need some time to think. I'm going to tell you the answer in 3, 2, 1... I have to go one higher than the maximum number that I want to generate. Okay, so if I wanted to generate a number between 1 and 12, I would have to put 1, 13. But as I just stated, I don't want to generate a random number between 1 and uh, 12. What I want to generate is two random numbers between 1 and 6, and then add them together. So I can do random.rand range 1, 7 plus random. Uh, random random dot rand range um, one comma seven. Okay, so this is going to roll one dice. It's going to roll another dice. It's going to add them together. Okay, cool. And then it prints out the total just so that we can see whether we have won or not. Okay, now we're almost at the point where we can check to see whether we've won this one round. Okay, so we're going to need to use an if statement. Okay, now this is fairly complicated because there are a few conditions. We need to check to see what the user actually bet on, whether it was um, 2 or 12, 4 or 10, or 6 or 8, and we need to make sure that the dice rolled up that value. Okay, so we could do something like this. If, um, what do we say, bet type equals a so a is uh, 2 or a 12 okay and um, total you know I've called it total I should be calling it result that was not a deliberate error that was me being an idiot okay so if bet type equals a and result uh, equals 2 or 12 okay then uh, print well done uh, you win okay um, else at this stage, we're just going to say, right, if you come up a 2 or a 12, you're 1. Otherwise, you know, we're going to lose on everything else. Print, um, oh no, you lost. Okay. Um, so let's just check this out. I've got to change this total to result. Okay, here we go. Let's let's test the game out again. Welcome to craps. Blah 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 blah. Let's say we're going to bet five fifty quid. There we go. I was going to say five hundred, but I couldn't type. Uh, what type of bet? We are going to say bet type A. Okay. Uh, right. Okay. Result equals eight. So we rolled an eight. Now it said, "Well done, you win." But we said, if bet type equals A, which it was, and result equals two or twelve. Well, results not two or twelve. Result is eight there. What's happened? What's gone wrong? I'm pretending to be confused. Obviously, I know exactly what's gone wrong. Okay, but what do you think has gone wrong? Pause the video if you if you want and have a think about it. the uh, The error is on this line here. Okay, and specifically, it's in this bit here. So I'm going to show you the answer in three. Three, two, one. Here we go. So, 
computers can't contextualize things in the way that humans can. If I said to you, right, if the bet type is A and the result is 2 or 12, you would understand that that OR12 is talking about the result. Computers cannot do that. We have to be very, very specific with them. So we have to say this. Okay, if bet type equals A and result equals 2 or result equals 12. Okay? The other thing as well, because of the way that logic works and always happens before or. So we need to put some brackets around that, like that. Okay? And you're probably thinking, oh man, this is way too complicated now. It's like, well, yeah, and in a minute I'm going to show you a way quicker way of doing it. Okay? So, let's say, how much do we want to bet? It's bet 50. Uh, we're going to say A. Okay. Aha! Right. We rolled an 8. Oh no, you lost. Okay, now I'm just going to fudge things here um, because I am going to make sure that we automatically win regardless of the result. I'm going to set result equals 2 there just to check that it's working as intended. Okay, so here we go. I bet 40 quid. I am going to bet for A. It said result equals 3, but remember I set result to 2 there, so it's well done, you win. If I set the result to 12 here, uh, let's just do that. Um, 50, let's say A. Well done, you win. Again, remember that result is not 7, it's 12. Um, let's try it again, and let's just... Uh, we will put B as our thing there. Oh no, you lost. Good. Okay. Notice how I am testing this stuff as I go along. Before I start adding bits to the program, I'm testing out the bits that I add. Okay. Now, it might be a bit of overkill, but when you are first starting out programming, test everything. Make sure that it all works. Okay. Don't just take it for granted that it's going to work. Okay. Now, I can get rid of that line there, so don't need it. So if bet type equals A and result equals 2 or result equals 12, you know what? I'm going to show you a much more efficient way of doing this. Okay? Instead of saying result equals 2 or result equals 12, I can just say and result in 2, comma 12. Okay? What this means is if whatever our value in result is, if that matches any of the values in this list, which is stored in between these two square brackets, okay, then that's going to return true. Okay, So you can add as many different things to this list as you want, but the only ones that we're interested in are 2 or, are two or 12. Okay, So just to prove that it works, um, let's uh, it's about 50 quid. That's a. Um, I rolled a six and I lost. I'm going to fudge the result again. Um, so I'm going to say result equals 12 there, and I'm going to run it. Oh God, what have I done? Uh, did not mean to do that. I did not mean to click the debug. I meant to click on. There we go. Uh, how much do you want to bet? Uh, 50 quid, uh, and there we go. Uh, well done, you win, because my result is 12. 12 is in this list of 2 or 12. There it is. Okay. Cool. Hopefully, you are still with me. Now, based on that, you should be able to uh, create an elif here. So, at the moment, we're only checking like if the player has bet result uh, A. Um, we are going to check for bet type B and bet type C. So instead of this else, well, I'll keep that else in there, but I'll just add an elif up here. Uh, so elif bet type uh, equals B uh, and results in uh, what are the values for B, 4 and 10. Uh, print. Um, well done. Uh, you win. Okay, so we've got that. I'm going to have another elif for the final bet type C. Elif uh, bet type uh, 
uh, equals C and result in uh, what have we got? Six or eight? Six or eight? Seventy-eight? No, eight. There we go. Uh, we are going to also print. Uh, well done. You win. Okay. So if our bet type is A and our result is uh, in this list, we're going to win. Otherwise, if that's not the case, uh, we check this event here. If bet type is B and our result is in there, brilliant, we've won. Otherwise, we're going to check this. If bet type is C and result is in here, we're going to print we won. Otherwise, we are going to lose. Okay, so now should have all things uh, accounted for. I'm just going to get rid of that result equals 12. Let's run this a few times and just double check that everything is going according to plan. Uh, let's check. Let's do a B this time. Okay, I rolled a seven. That's a that's a loss regardless of what we're betting on. Okay, cool. Uh, what is next? Um, I'll try a B again. Um, okay, I rolled a six, which is a loss for option B. Keep on going. Um, a six again. Um, here we go. How much do you want to bet? Oh, let's just do that. Um, keep on going through. Got a 12 that time. I mean, it's it might be worth um, it. It might be worth actually hard coding the values in for testing purposes just to make sure that this works. Um, oh, there we go. We we got a we got a 10. Okay, 10 is 10 is a winning result for B. Brilliant. Okay, great. Um, so, right, we are currently able, we are currently able to um, place a bet, say how much we want to bet. We are also able to say what type of bet we want to make, uh, and um, we are able to um, it it checks to see if we win or lose. Uh, so you see there, I, I bet on a C, I got an A, and I and I win there. Okay, so we, we win or lose based on that. At the moment, it doesn't do anything with our money. Okay, so what we want to do is um, we want to look at how this works. So when I put my stake up, I need to remove that from my uh, funds. Okay, so if I'm putting up uh, a £500 stake, I will subtract 500 from funds, and I will store it in stake. Okay, and then when I get the payback, I will use stake to calculate how much I get. So, do you know what I'm going to do with this debug output? I am going to move it um, down here. So we get all of our debug output at the same uh, point. So we can keep all of this stuff uh, together. Okay, so there's our... Um, Uh, put a comment in there, roll dice. Okay, and then we've got our debug output there, um, and this bit here is going to be check winnings. Okay, cool. So once I've placed this bet, I need to say uh, funds uh, minus equals stake. Okay, so I'm removing the stake from the funds holding it in escrow if you like okay now when it comes to doing our payout we just need to add this on to the uh, the funds again okay so I'm gonna say uh, funds uh, plus equals and the winnings for bet type a are five to one so I can say five times stake okay and uh, same for this one I can say funds plus equals uh, 2.5 times stake uh, and this one here I can say um, funds um, plus equals um, 1.5 uh, times stake okay um, good so now down here Let's have some more debug output here. I can print uh, debug. Uh, what do we need to know? We need to know what the current funds are. Um, uh, that 
that should be it really okay cool so let's I guess let's test it out let's let's test it out I mean uh, if we can play one round nicely all we have to do then is stick it into a loop okay um, so let's play around here we go how much do we want to bet let's say we bet 50 um, we'll go for an easy one C I lost what did we roll uh, we rolled a five that would have been a, a loss regardless funds is now 950 so we know that it's properly subtracted our stake okay uh, let's try it again uh, let's put up 50 quid again let's do a bet on C oh we won okay cool so what has happened here uh, the stake was 50 our funds are now a uh, thousand and twenty five um, so we should have we took 50 off our um, we took 50 off our funds so that should have given us 950 one and a half times uh, 50 is 75 uh, 950 plus 75 is 1025 and that is indeed what we have there but one thing that I've noticed here I've got instead of saying just 1025 it says 1025.0 okay why does it say that this is a question for you guys at home why does it say 1025.0 pause the video if you need some help if you need some help if you need some time to think and I will tell you in three two one it's because when we multiply by 1.5 we are converting in effect from an integer into a um, into a float okay so it's still gonna be a um, uh, it's, it's still going to be effectively an integer value. Uh, this is why I, I didn't want to um, have, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to deal with floating point values in here. Although I've just realized that if I bet one pound, okay, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a pound fifty back off that. So might have to deal with floats anyway because what I was going to do was convert the funds back to an integer so I don't know we'll 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 keep it how it is for now uh, and then when we come to refining this later uh, we'll look at how we can we'll look at how we can um, sort that out okay so I'm probably gonna want a little bit more feedback for the user here and this will help us do away with some of this debug text okay so we are going to say um, before we actually um, before we get into this checking if we won. Why don't we just tell the user what we've rolled? You know, it's not a secret what the what the dice is. So why don't we just print out for the user? Um, uh, you roll the dice. Let's, let's build up the tension here. Um, pring. Um, and the result is plus uh, convert result to a string. And then let's add an exclamation mark so it's even more exciting. Okay, now that should really be under the roll dice section. Okay, um, so I no longer need this debug for my result. Um, I yeah, I I know that the the uh, the bet type and the stake things are working fine now, so I can probably get rid of those debugs. Okay, so here's our roll dice section. So you roll the dice, and the result is, and then it tells us. Okay, so it's going to tell us whether we've won or not. Why don't we help the user out even more and tell them how much they've won? Um, so we can say um, why don't we combine it into this line? 
Okay, you win, and then we can just say. Now again, we have to convert this to a string, but we can still do the calculations on the fly. Um, five times stake, like that. Okay, and we can do something similar to all of these as well. Okay, so plus string conversion, uh, 2.5 times stake. There we go. And down here, uh, we can do the same thing as well. Uh, let's string uh, uh, 1.5 uh, times stake uh, and then down here um, and we could say we, we we lost we could say how much we lost if we wanted to we can you know you lost you know your stake but we are, I'm assuming that the player can remember how much they bet uh, the last thing that we want to do though uh, is actually tell the user how much money they've got okay so we can say uh, print um, you now have Um, how much money? Um, you now have this much money. Okay, and then we can do away with that debug. Okay, it, you don't need debug output for stuff that's already being output to the um, to the user. So we haven't really changed much here, but we've made it a little bit more user friendly, so to speak. Okay, so let's have a look. We've currently got a thousand pounds. Let what am I doing there? How much do I want to bet? I want to bet £100. Cool. What are we betting on? Let's go crazy. Let's bet on a B. Uh, oh, no. If only I'd gone for C. So you roll the dice. The result is 8. Oh, no. You lost. You now have £900. Okay. This seems this seems to be working for a, uh, for a, single, a single roll of the dice. But remember, we are going to keep on going until uh, either the user runs out of cash or they decide to quit. Okay, so we are going to need a loop. Think back and tell me what type of loop we are going to need. It's either going to be a for loop or a while loop. Okay, I'm going to give you the answer in three, two, one. It is a while loop. We don't know how many times the user is going to play. Okay, so we can't use a for loop. It's got to be a while loop. Okay, so let's think about which bits are repeating. We don't want to repeat the introduction. Okay, we do want to repeat uh, the placing of the bet. We do want to repeat the rolling of the dice. Um, we do want to repeat the checking of the winnings, and we probably want to repeat the telling the user of how much money they have. Okay, so up here I said you currently have that's that's our initial um, uh, amount so why don't we just create the while loop here right we can say while for now let's create an infinite loop while true this stuff's gonna happen forever okay now if I create my while loop up there obviously everything that's inside the while loop needs to be indented so with PyCharm what I, what I can do is select all the stuff that needs to be indented and then just press the tab key okay and then it is indented Okay. Now the cool thing about PyCharm is, although we press the tab key, what that does is insert spaces. Okay, so uh, it's always better to uh, use spaces for indentation rather rather than tabs, uh, regardless of what other people might tell you. If they say use tabs rather than spaces, they are wrong. Um, However, with PyCharm, you kind of get the best of both worlds because uh, you press tab, it inserts spaces. Um, cool. So now we've got this infinite loop. In theory, we should be able to just keep on playing, keep on, keep on trucking. Let's uh, let's try this. So we currently have a thousand pounds. Let's say I'm going to bet a hundred uh, on a. Let's let's go easy. Oh no, we rolled a nine. Okay, so I got nine hundred pounds. Let's bet three hundred pounds. Um, yes, we won. I won £450, so now uh, I am back up to uh, 1050 uh, Let's go absolutely insane mode here. Um, oh, it was, it was, it was never going to, it was never going to work. Okay, I now have 50 quid. Let's, here we go. We're all, all or nothing, all or nothing here. Uh, oh, no, we lost. Okay. Oh, what's this? We now have naught pounds. How much do you want to bet? Let's, let's bet 
six thousand pounds okay so it's still um uh it's still oh my god i won i now have three grand um yeah uh so obviously although our loop is working there are still things that need to happen we need to check to make sure that the user actually has enough money um to uh to place their bet okay now that's going to happen up here in the place bet area okay so um we need to check to see if the user has uh, actually entered a valid amount uh, and if they haven't we're going to keep on asking them until they have okay so what we're going to do is um, we're going to need another loop uh, to do this we're going to have a uh, we're going to have a while loop um, and let's see how this is going to work right when it comes to doing sort of like input validation like this, um, you can use Boolean values which are known as flags. Okay, a flag is something which is set to either true or false that tells us the state of something in the program. So to start off with, we are going to assume that the user's uh, uh, stake that they've put up is not valid. Okay, so I can say um, straight away. Uh, let's call it valid bet. That would be a uh, valid bet equals false. This is our flag. Okay, to start off with, we're saying it is not a, uh, a valid bet. We can now have a while loop. It says while not valid bet. Okay, we are going to first of all ask the user how much they want to bet. Okay, now we have to check. If they've entered something valid, we can move on. If we if they haven't entered something valid, we need to tell them and then ask them again. Okay, so how do we know if this thing's valid? Well, if their stake is greater than the amount of money they've got, it's not valid. Okay, so we can say uh, if uh, stake is greater than funds, we are going to tell the user, we're going to say, um, you don't have the funds uh, to cover that bet. Okay, you don't have the funds to cover that bet. Uh, otherwise, we're going to assume, okay, cool, they've got enough money, so we can set valid bet to true. Okay, so valid bet equals true. Cool, right? Um, and then down here again, we need to check to see if they've entered either A, B, or C. We can use the same flag. Okay, so straight away we have to set valid bet to false because to get out of this loop, valid bet has been set to true. So we 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 turn the flag off again, and we're going to have another while loop. Okay, so while we're going to say while uh, not valid bet. Okay, um, and we're going to ask them to enter their bet type, and we're going to say uh, if uh, bet type uh, not in this list, it's either going to be A, or it's going to be B, or it's going to be C. Okay, it's got to be one of those three. If it's not in that list, we are going to uh, tell the user. We're going to say print, um, you must enter uh, either A, B, or C. Exclamation mark to ram the point home. Okay. Otherwise, we can set that flag to true. Okay. We can say valid bet uh, equals true. Okay. So, just by using these Boolean flags, okay, and uh, and a couple of while loops, we can double check that the user has entered a valid bet. There's still a couple of other validation points, okay. Um, like for instance, if they when we're asking the user to um, to type in uh, how much they want to bet, we're assuming that they're going to be typing in a number. Uh, if they don't type in a number. Uh, the program is going to crash, um, but we will we will worry about that um, later on. Okay. Now, in a similar way, we don't want the uh, the main game loop uh, to run uh, forever. Okay. We are going to set a flag. 
uh, called uh, game running. Okay, and instead of while true, we can say while game running. Okay, so while the game is running, we are going to go through this. Okay, uh, we are going to place the bet. Uh, we're going to do all that validation, uh, and then uh, if everything's valid, we are going to then uh, subtract the stake from our funds. We're then going to roll the dice, uh, we're then going to check the winnings, we're then going to tell the user how much money they've got. Now we need to offer the user the chance to uh, leave the game. Okay, so we can say, um, let's have a variable called leave. Um, leave equals input um, uh, do you want to uh, play again you know what calling it leave uh, that's going to be disingenuous let's call it again okay again do you want to play again uh, let's say yes or no okay and once again uh, we are going to uh, convert that to lowercase okay um, so now that they've entered that we can say uh, if uh, again uh, does not equal um, wait no if, if again uh, yeah if again does not equal uh, y okay if they if they say no they don't want to play again well I mean, we're not we're not just going to say yes or no we're going to say yes or anything else if they enter anything that isn't um why uh we are going to quit the game okay we are going to say um game running uh equals false okay um I guess as well we should at this point check to see if they've run out of money uh, because they they can't play again if um, uh, if they if they have no money um, so I guess we should check that before we ask them to play again because if they've run out of money um, then you know they they they're done for so we can say if funds uh, is less than or equal to zero. I don't think it will ever be less than zero, but you know, just to be on the safe side, uh, we are going to uh, we're going to tell the user they've run out of money. Uh, you have run out of cash. Uh, print. Get out, you bum. Get out of here, you bum! There we go. Um, and we are going to set uh, game running uh, to false as well. Okay. Um, now, once we've set game running to false, you know we need to then not execute anything else. So we're going to have an uh, uh, we're going to have an else in here, and all of this lot is going to um, be part of that. Okay, so if funds is not less than or equal to zero, we're going to ask the users if they want to play again. Okay, um, that's that's pretty much it by the looks of things. So let's um, let's try uh, running this game. So we currently have a thousand uh, pounds. Let's try and bet two thousand uh, pounds. You don't have the funds to cover that bet. Um, Okay, let's let's bet um, five hundred pounds. Uh, what type of bet are we going to make? Let's go for C. Oh no, I rolled a three. Okay, we lost. Uh, we have five hundred pounds. Do we want to play again? Yes, let's play again. Right, how much do we want to bet? Um, let's bet two hundred pounds this time, and let's go for. Oh no! Oh, look, so close, so close. We got an eleven. Um, Oh, right, 300 pounds. Yeah, cool. Let's play again. Uh, I want to bet... Uh, let's go 100 pounds on C. Oh, man. You know, the uh, our luck's just not with us now. You know what? I've got 200 quid. I'm going to take my money and run. So uh, let's select no. There we go. It's just exited the game. We should probably put something else after we've exited the game. Just saying, oh, thanks for playing or something like that. Um, but let's just let's just run it again 
uh, and see if we can run out of money. So uh, I'm going to bet a grand and on the most ridiculous one there. Oh, no, look, you've run out of cash. Get out, you bum. There we go. So because we ran out of, uh, of money, we have been thrown out, forcibly ejected from the casino. OK, I'm just going to put a, a comment next to this bit. Um, I'm going to call it that section play again. OK. Um, OK, so after we've after we've sort of exited the casino, um, we can say um, and we can say uh, you ended up with a grand total of um, and then we can say how much money they got like that um, hope to see you again soon 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 um, print prompt uh, print thanks uh, for playing exclamation mark okay um, let's have a look. We start with a grand. Uh, we got all that bet type malarkey all sorted out. Uh, we've rolled the dice. We've checked to see if they match. We keep on going until either we run out of money or um, uh, or we ask, you know, or the or the user says they want to leave. Um, I I think I think we're done here. Um, there's only one other piece of validation. Um, that I can think of, although I can think of a bug. Okay, uh, so the other piece of validation that I was thinking of was um, checking to see that the users actually entered a um, uh, an integer value for their um, uh, for their for their funds. Okay, um, so. One thing that we could try um, is this. Okay, so we could do um, do, 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 do. We could try and convert the um, value uh, to an integer. Okay, so we can say try. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to remove the conversion there. I'm thinking on the fly here. Um, we're we're going to try converting it to an integer. Um, try um, stake equals int stake. Okay. Um, What's happened here? Uh, we're going to need an except. Um, I can't remember what the whether it's type underscore error. Uh, probably not. Right, you're going to have to bear with me just a sec here uh, while I uh, consult the the mighty oracle. Um, because it's actually been ages since I did this basic uh, checking here. Um, so let's just double check the uh, the, the Python documentation here. Um, find out what the exact syntax is. Um, uh, okay, I don't actually need to specify value error I think is what we are looking for yeah okay cool so we're gonna say value error um, good here we go so we're gonna say except uh, value error I wanna say that but again that looks that looks wrong um, Uh, 
Uh, capital V on value error, that's why. Honestly. There you go. See, even experts need to check the uh, the documentation every once in a while. So, um, uh, we are going to say... Um, print, uh, you must enter a numeric... Value um, Okay, let me think about how this is actually working. I haven't properly thought this through. So what this what this does here, it will try to do the thing. Uh, that we specify in the try block, right? If something goes wrong, if there's an error, uh, normally when you try and convert a uh, an integer value to a uh, sorry a string value to an integer, uh, if it doesn't look like a number, it can't convert it, and your program will crash. So what we've done here is we said try and do this. If you get a value error, i.e., if it's a uh, uh, if if the entered some text and they should have uh, entered a number uh, then do the thing here okay so we need to print out you must enter a numeric value um, now after we've done that regardless of what we do we're going to move down here so um, what we need to do here is just double check to see if the um, type of uh, it, you know we, we need to check to see if uh, stake is an integer. Um, so I guess I could do um, I could do if type um, stake equals type zero. Um, Uh, okay, let's try that. We could do if type um, stake. See, I wonder what that is actually going to come out as. Right. Equals um, for the purposes of this, I'm just going to do that. Okay. Uh, do not compare types. Use is instance. Uh, you know what? I'm going to ignore that warning. I'm going to try it anyway. Um, how much do I want to bet? Hello. You must enter a new McVary. How much do you want to bet? Good. Okay. Well, that's working, but this is this is moaning at us. Um, let me... Uh, I'm just going to have a look at the uh, at what that um, is instance means. Um, Python three is instance. Uh, okay, where is is instance? Is instance? Uh, return true if the object argument is an instance of the class info argument or of an I of a direct, indirect, or virtual subclass thereof. If object is not an object of the given type, uh, the function always returns false. If class info is a tuple of type objects or recursively other such tuples, return true if object is an instance of any of the types. If class info is not a type or tuple of types and such tuples, a type error exception is raised. Well, that that's clear as mud now, isn't it? Um, good. So... Let's, let's try something. So, is 
instance um, the object that is stake and the okay can I say I want to say int is that gonna work let's try this out okay let's let's try it how much do I want to bet oh, well, uh, Hey, okay, that works. That's uh, cool. I've learned something today. Um, okay, so you can check to see if something is actually an integer here. Um, that's cool. Okay, so let's let's have a look at what's actually gone on here. In fact, I'm going to comment this so you can see. Um, try to convert to an integer. Um, There we go, and here it's um, if the integer conversion worked, we can continue. Cool. Okay. Wicked. I, I yeah, I, I feel pretty good because I've learned something myself. I, I realise that I've been doing this for over an hour now. It's the longest, uh, longest video. But I'm hoping that like you seeing the way my brain is is sort of like piecing this stuff together is helping you out. Now, I did say there was a bug in this program. Um, so if I if if I just run this program now, okay, we don't have a bug. You know, I can type in this. You know. Got to enter a numeric value. That's brilliant. Okay. Um, what if I type in minus a thousand pounds? Ooh, it lets me do that because minus a thousand uh, is less than um, my funds, right? Um, so, okay, th there's a problem there. And le let's. Look, I rolled. Oh no, I lost. You now have two thousand pounds because it's given me my stake of minus a thousand back. Obviously, there's a problem here. Uh, do we want to play again? No, we do not want to play again. Okay. And I've just noticed another thing uh, that's slightly uh, inconsistent here. So I'm just going to change uh, that. Let's put the old new line and the thing in there. Okay. Um, so what? How are we going to fix this? Okay. Um, we could do an if statement uh, that checks to see if stake is uh, less than zero or uh, really less than one. We don't want stake to be less than one, but we can do this all in one line. So I could say um, if stake is, um, I could have a line that says if stake is less than zero, um, then, um, you know, I could have a, an elif in here. So I could say something like elif uh, stake is less than one. Uh, oh, I say less than or equal to one. Um, we can print. Um, you must bet uh, at least one. Uh, let's say one pound. Exclamation mark. Okay. So now when I run the the thing, how much do I want to bet? If I say minus twenty three, you must bet at least a pound. I could say zero, you must bet at least a pound. Okay, whatever. I'll bet a pound. Uh oh, what have I done? Uh, yeah, I I, uh, I I've made a mistake here. The mistake is on line thirty five. That wasn't a planned mistake. That was just me, like you know, being an idiot again. Uh, so I can I can bet a pound. There we go. Um, I lost and now I've got nine hundred ninety nine pound. So I could do it that way. Uh, I could change this. I could say um, if um, stake is greater than funds. Um, actually, no, because the way that I'd end up doing that, I'd say if not, um, uh, if not, uh, one is less than stake, which is. Uh, less than funds. I could do it that way, and then nah, that's that's stupid. It, ignore me, ignore me. Um, I I was right to have an elif in there. Um, I mean, cool. I think we're done now. Okay, so we've got I've got all the code here. 
Um, so if you need to pause it and copy any bits out, I'll go, I'll go through it all. So we start off by importing random. We then initialize the variables. Okay, so we've got funds, we've got result, we've got bet uh, stake, we've got bet type. Uh, maybe I should initialize again as well. Um, just to be on the on the safe side, do I need to initialize valid bet? Uh, well, maybe, maybe not. Um, the flags, yeah. Let's let's keep them where they are. We don't really need that. I mean, I could initialize game running as well, but let's let's keep it all as it is. Okay, so um, uh, we print out our introduction, um, and then we tell the player how much money they've got right um, now we set our game running flag to true uh, and while the game is running we are going to execute this whole loop we're going to start off by placing a bet so we set our valid bet flag to be false uh, and then while it's not a valid bet we try and ask the user how much they want to bet now this is fairly complex compared to what it was because it was just one line right um, so we ask the user to enter an amount to bet and then we try to convert it to an integer uh, if there's an error, i.e. if I type in uh, something that is text and not numeric, then um, we print out, you must enter a numeric value. It's worth noting, obviously, if we get to this point, then that hasn't happened. We've reached an error before we've got there, so stake is still a string. So now we've used this uh, new command that I discovered today called isInstance. Uh, if isInstance stake int, what that means is if stake is a type of integer, okay, then you know, return true, and we, we use this uh, whatever's in the if statement. So if stake is an integer, that means that we successfully converted it here, so now we can carry on doing that. If it's not an integer, we just end the loop and we go back up and ask them to uh, uh, to enter a value. So if stake is an integer, we double check to see if stake is greater than funds. If stake is greater than funds, we tell the user they don't have the funds to cover that bet. Okay, and then we loop back round. If stake is less than one, um, then we tell the user they must bet at least one pound. If we're still here, then obviously we've done something right, so it is a valid bet. So we say valid bet equals true. Uh, when we check it up here, we go back down here. We then immediately set the valid bet flag to false again, um, because we're going to use it to verify that the user has entered uh, the... Uh, the bet type correctly. Okay, so what type of bet? Um, basically, if the user doesn't type in A, B, or C, we're going to keep hounding them until they do. Okay, so uh, you've got to enter either A, B, or C. Once they've done that, we set valid bet as true, and then, and only then, we are ready to remove stake from funds. Okay? Right, once that bet's out of the way, that's a fairly large section there, placing the bet. Once that's out of the way, we are going to roll the dice. Okay, so uh, we randomly generate a number between 1 and 6. We randomly generate another number between 1 and 6, and then we add them together, and we store it in this variable called result. Okay, we give the, uh, the user some dramatic uh, explanation of, um, uh, of rolling the dice. Uh, and so we roll the dice and the result is and then it tells us what the result is once we've rolled the dice we check our winnings so if bet type equals a and the result is in this list either 2 or 12 then obviously the user has won and they get five times their stake back we tell the user how much money they've won and then we add on their winnings to the funds okay otherwise uh, if their bet type is B and the result is in this list four or ten uh, obviously we tell the user how much they've won two and a half times their stake and then we add it onto their funds uh, otherwise if the result uh, if the bet type sorry is C and the result is in this list six or eight uh, then they win uh, one and a half times their stake so we tell them that and then we add it onto their funds if we haven't hit any of these conditions then we know we've lost okay now that might be because um, uh, we rolled a seven it might be because we rolled one of these numbers but they didn't match up with the bet type whatever the reason is we've lost so we just tell the user that we have lost okay we then get onto this point where we ask the user if they want to play again so we tell the user how much money they've got um, so they can make an informed decision okay um, 
and so if the funds are less than zero or equal to zero we tell them you've run out of cash we're not even going to ask the question we throw them out of the casino get out okay and we set game running to false if the funds is not less than or equal to zero however we ask them do you want to play again okay and we convert their um, uh, their text entry to lowercase so we just have to compare uh, one thing here um, if they have if they said yes they want to um, uh, play again we don't do anything if they have not see how we've used not there uh, if they have not selected yes then we set game running to false okay I could here say if uh, again equals uh, no uh, so they have to type in no in order to, or they have to type in n in order to uh, um, uh, to exit. Um, I mean, I could, I could have a uh, uh, a flag here uh, that repeats the loop and asks them to type in either yes or no, you know, y or n, and it won't accept anything else. Okay, I will leave that to you to implement if you want to. Uh, what's this? Ho to see you again. No, hope to see you again soon. Uh, we're not we're not Las Vegas. Um, cool. Uh, I will put um, farewell messages massages. There we go. There you go. If you manage to now, obviously. Um, those of you that went away and programmed your own version of craps, you may have done it completely different to me, right? Uh, there may be elements of mine which exist in yours. There may be some bits of mine where you think, wow, I did mine totally different. I mean, mine's what, 82 lines of code? Um, you might have done it in half of that. That's fine, you know? Um, the great thing about uh, programming is that there's many, many different ways of getting the same outcome. Some work better than others. Um, there are lots of ways that I could easily condense this down uh, into uh, far fewer lines. Okay, but the reason I've written it the way that I have is so that I can, um, well, so that it all makes sense to you uh, as new uh, Python users, uh, but also so that you can see the process that I went through as I was uh, as I was building the game. Now, obviously, there's still probably a fair amount of testing. Um, I would have to play through the game time and time again just to double check that everything is all working. Um, but as far as I can tell, there doesn't seem to be any errors in the game. So um, that's that's it for this uh, for this. Episode. This is a very long one uh, compared compared to the others. Um, necessarily so, though. Um, now, in um, upcoming videos, we are going to be looking at data structures. Uh, we are going to be um, looking at functions, um, and um, we've got other things coming up, like um, creating graphical games, creating uh, graphical user interfaces using TK Inter. There's a whole bunch of stuff left to look at. Uh, before we get onto that hardcore stuff, we need to do functions and we need to do classes. Okay, so there's there's still a way to go before your uh, before your Python journey is ready, um, but you're at the point now where you should be able to create a whole bunch of very simple uh, text-based games um, that have some reasonably complex mechanics uh, using using loops and um, and different random variables. So um, thank you for watching, everybody. Uh, thank you for making it to the end if you made it this far, and uh, I shall see you next time. <laughs>